Okay, so in the last video we got our project set up, and in this one we're going to start working on some basic things that we know that we're going to need. So for starters, I know this is going to be, I might as well break out Notepad, I know they are going to be player hosted, so we're going to have a listen server. Things we're going to need is some way to interact, so just interaction, and within that interaction, we're going to have to have some sort of way to pick up slash hold items, open slash close items, or doors, cabinets, whatever. So we might be triggering animations, so that will usually indicate that we want to have a interaction interface. And for now, that's going to probably be what we try to accomplish. So actually, on top of that, with interaction, we want to have some way to actually examine the item. So I guess we can pick it up and rotate it around and all that kind of stuff. So on the interaction, let's do examine. I do not think that is sputter, but we want to be able to hold item close, rotate item around, and I think that's about it for that. And for the interaction, we also want to be able to drop item slash snap down. So what I mean by snap down, um, I'm kind of referring to, I don't know if we are going to end up wanting to do this. We might make the object kind of fall by physics. But to make it snap down, what we could do is make it so it pretty much it just it snaps to whatever is directly below it. So I'm going to go ahead and call that to do.text and let's see so we have our interaction our examining we need a basic inventory so in that inventory we're probably going to want to hold things like keys for example and if we have keys we want to make sure that the items so we're going to have an items let me rephrase that interactables these interactables are going to want to be able to have unlock slash locking or no, just unlock and with unlocking we want to make sure these go based upon unlocking based on player inventory so that way if we have let's say we have a lock or a door that's locked and player one has a key that unlocks it if player two tries to walk up and unlock the door, it's not going to unlock. But if player one, who has the key, tries to walk up and unlock the door, it will unlock and open. So we are going to want to have these, have their states saved. Because I do want, I'm trying to think, I do kind of want these to have a join in progress. So that'll be kind of more so up here. So listen server, join in progress allowed. Server browser, VS Steam online subsystem. And that's all I can think of off the top of my head. So we're going to start with these in kind of roughly an order that I want to complete them in. So let's, the server system is probably going to be last. So we want to do the interaction first. So we pick up, hold, uh, build, open, and close items or doors and such, and drop. The item that we are holding. Let me actually move that up one. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is I kind of want to have probably it'll be easiest to go from there right to interactables. But to work with the interactables, we're going to need a basic inventory. And for that, we're going to have to create a key. So let's start with the interaction. We want to have the ability to like pick up and all that kind of stuff, and that's usually going to be handled via line trace. So we're going to go ahead and create a line trace by channel, and what we're going to go do from there is we're going to create our own dedicated channel. So that way, our line trace will only hit things that well. There, let me rephrase that: the line trace is only going to be blocked by objects that have this custom channel set to block. So we're going to kind of set it up. And that way, so only things we want to interact with are going to get blocked by that channel. So it's very easy. It's 
to test. We don't have to worry about other items necessarily blocking it. But now that I'm thinking about that, that might not be a good idea. So if we, let's say we have this, or let's see, let me skinny this up. I'll actually duplicate it. Let's say we have this wall and then the wall behind it. So let's say this is the thicker wall and we want to build a, this thicker wall right here has our custom line trace channel set to block. This one has it set to ignore. Well, if we send a line trace right through here, straightforward, it's going to go right through it and it's going to hit this wall. We don't want that. We're going to actually want this to be blocking instead. So what we're going to do actually is not have a custom trace channel. Instead, we are going to make it so it pretty much anything will block the line trace if it hits it. But we're going to have a pickup interface on the interactable. So interaction, we need a pickup interface on the interactables. Let me move that down here. All right, so let's go ahead and start, I guess, writing it. But first things first, we need a we need a function for it. So here we have our moving, all that kind of fun junk. I'm going to do it above it. We're going to do void. Let's call the function interact. Now, I want to have, actually, we'll make this adjustable here in a little bit. So let's just create the implementation for now. Here's our interact function. Let's go ahead and create the input for it. So where we bind our jump action, we're also going to do another one called interact. So when we press it, we want it to call our interact function. Now, because we created this new action, we have to create it as an input for our game. So we're going to go into the project, settings, project settings, input, and we're just going to add another action mapping and call it interact. So whenever the player presses F, I want it to call our interact function. So now we press F, assuming once we actually go through and recompile, interact will get called. So here we want to perform our line trace. So for the time being, I want to just simply go from our camera. So I figure that's going to probably be the best route because eventually we're going to have probably a crosshair or something like that. I might actually make it so we're kind of in a true first person kind of scenario where our camera is actually attached to the head bone and we just hide the head bone to the character. But for the time being, let's just go ahead and go from our camera. So F vector dart equals, let's see, what is it? Get follow camera, get component location. Then F vector, we need our endpoint for the line. That's going to be start plus our follow camera, get forward vector. We want to multiply that by the length that we want the line trace to be. So in our case, I'm just going to do it 500. And now we can do the line trace. So if, what is it? Uh, get world line trace single by channel. And let's see. I want to do by channel. And we'll do by channel. So we know this output's doing hit result. So F hit result. Hit result. So it's going to taken the reference to their hit result, then our start location, then the end of the line, and then it takes in the collision channel, so E collision channel. I'm just going to do static. This is pretty much everything's going to have that blocked. Then we have the parameters, and it would be really great if it would tell me what the parameter name was called again. And so it's F collision query params. So F Collision query params. Params. And the only thing we're going to do is params dot add ignored actor. This. So we're just going to be ignoring ourselves. And we can pass in params as a, another parameter and we are done. So in here, just UE log, log temp, warning, text, line trace, hit something. So after that, just to confirm that, you know, it actually did work, what I'm going to do is simply draw a debug line. So I'm going to do draw debug line, get world, start, end. And as you can see, there is an issue because we want to include draw debug helpers.h. So up at the top, 
a hashtag include draw debug helpers.h. Now we can see the rest of the parameters. So we have start, end, and are you going to tell me? So start and color. So f color. I always do red. Persistent lines, false. Then what is the next parameter? There we go. Now you're actually going to shut me. Lifetime, uh, we'll do three seconds. Depth priority, zero. And thickness, I'm just going to do three as well. And that should be it. So because, as I mentioned in the previous video, I made a change to the header, I'm going to close down the game, recompile, and just simply relaunch it. Alrighty, now that we're back in, let's give it a try. So I press F, and there's our line. So, line trace hits something, I look straight up. Nothing gets printed, look straight down, line trace hits something. So we know we're good to go, pretty much. So, we have our line trace. Now, we also want to do a couple other things. We want to get the object that is actually being hit. So this is going to kind of correspond with interactables with our interaction. So we want whatever we actually hit to be able to be, well, interactable. So let's see. We're going to want to create the pickup interface. So I'm actually going to move this. Eh, no, leave it kind of way out of order with this. So we have our basic line trace. Now let's try to do something with it. So when our line trace hits something, let's try to just simply for now destroy it. So if hit result, hit actor, let's store that. So a actor hit actor equals our hit result get actor. And all we're going to do is hit actor We're just going to destroy it. That's it. So, save it. Control Alt F11 for hot reload or live coding. Sorry. So now, when I press F, as you can see, that disappeared, and I can't walk through it. Well, great. But as you recall, we are using a listen server. So let's play as such. So I play as a listen server, and I have play as client. I'm going to do play as listen server. Set the number of players to two and play an Indie Editor window. So this guy right here is the server, and this guy right here is the client. So on this guy, I'm going to destroy that box. But as you can see on the server here, it's still there. So if I jump up, I'm kind of a little bit bugged. Well, not bugged, but, well, yeah, it would be bugged. But on the client now, when I walk through it, I can't, because there's actually the object there. So as you can assume, this is not very ideal. Now, if I do the same thing, but on the server. So I delete on the server. Again, we have some issues. And it looks even way wonkier on this guy. It was really not top. Eh, nothing. So obviously there are some issues. So we need to have some form of replication. And we can actually kind of do that by, uh, if I come down here to search details, uh, what is it? Let's replicate movement. I don't entirely remember, but we're not going to be destroying static meshes we have in the world, so it's not that big of a deal. But what we want to have happen is when we delete it, we want it to also be deleted on the server. Let me rephrase that. We want it to be deleted on the server. We do not want it to be deleted on the client. That's kind of a no-no. So in the next video, we're going to make this set up to replicate. So we're going to be doing this from the client to the server, and then the server is going to kind of dictate what happens with the item that was hit. So that's going to be all for this video. And obviously in the next video, we're going to do what I just said. So I will see you then. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find our link to my Patreon in the description below. I have a team deathmatch series just for my patrons where we use Unreal Engine with C++ to create the team deathmatch game mode with a bunch of little extras like a weapon customizer, some really fancy spawning, all that fun stuff. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord down below as well, and I'll try to help you out. So, see you in the next video.